Howdy and welcome back. This next video is going to have us go through how to create the enemy spawner. Right now in our room, we had to manually place down our enemies. While they, yes, are randomly split between the large, medium, and small enemies, we want them to constantly spawn inside our world rather than only having the four here. So in order to accomplish this, let's go ahead and create a brand new object. We're going to end up creating two objects for this uh, activity. Right click on the objects, create, and we're going to create a new object. This is what we're going to call our OBJ enemy spawn. OBJ underscore enemy spawn. This is going to model the spawning animation of the enemy popping into the world. So I am not creative at all and I have no artistic skills. So I'm going to use my small enemy as the sprite and I'm going to add a create event. So again, this is going to just initialize. Let me zoom in for y'all. Initialize values for uh, spawn. In this case, all we want in the create event is just shrinking down the enemy x scale to be equal to a tenth of its starting value and the image underscore y scale to also be a tenth of its starting value. This is modeling the percentage 0.1 out of 1. So this shrinks it down. Uh, one tenth of the initial size. With it now scaled out to be tiny, we need to add another event, our step event. And this will be our uh, on growth to have it go from the small image that's a tenth of the size up to its full scale. So I'm going to have our image underscore x scale again is equal to this time the minimum value. It'll pick between these two numbers and find the smallest one. Our image underscore x scale plus 0 0.01. Every frame it's going to add 1% to the overall size. So it'll pick that number, or it's going to pick one, whichever is the smaller of the two. That becomes the new image x scale. Our image underscore y scale is going to be, uh, since we're going to keep it in a normal square shape uh, or a properly scaled up growth. I'm going to set them equal to each other because they should be the exact same size until they hit 100%. And uh, then they'll still stay the same size. They just won't change anymore. And so we now have our image growing when we throw it onto the screen. We can check if image x scale is equal to 1. We know it's going to hit exactly 1 because we have the min value here. It's either going to pick this number or that number at some point. The smaller number is going to be one. If it is in fact equal to one, I'm going to create a new instance. Instance underscore change. I'm going to change out of my spawning setup, which is this current object, to instead the object for the enemy. Now, rather than it being, oh yes, I spelled instance incorrectly. There we go. I have done this before. Now with this, we switch out of our current enemy into, or just the spawning animation to the actual enemy object that chases the player. This by itself will just create the brand new enemy, but does not do its create event. We want to specify, yes, do the create event for the enemy object. So that way it gets all of its initial values, such as picking the correct sprite and then getting the correct values based off of if it's a large, medium or small enemy. So to show this off, let's go back to the room. I'm going to delete these. We don't need these. I'm not going to throw down the spawner so we can see what they look like. So again, because I use the small image, it's going to look like that. If I run it, we're then going to be able to see how it grows into uh, whatever, or into the small size and then pops into whatever it is. You see it grows up 
and then begins chasing the player. This gives a neat little spawning effect, but we still had to place them down. So we get the next part, that is going to be our next object. Also notice that uh, the spawners are immune, you can't uh, damage them. And so they're invulnerable up until they actually begin chasing you. Let's now create the spawner. Let's go to object. This is going to be our obj underscore spawner. This is not going to have a sprite because we don't want anything on there. You can make a sprite. It'll be similar to the Minecraft spawner uh, boxes uh, or uh, cubes. This uh, is up to you. I'm not going to use an image for my thing. With the obj underscore spawner, I'm going to add a create event. In this create event, I'm going to specify this uh, sets up spawner. Our spawn rate, I'm going to set it equal to 60. So I want this to occur every 60 frames. I'm then going to specify to the variable alarm, open bracket zero, close bracket. This specifies alarm zero is going to be equal to our spawn rate. Now, Game Maker Studio does use alarms, and there's multiple alarms to reference. It's essentially a timer that ticks down. There's a couple of different ways on how you can set it up uh, rather than using the spawn rate. Similar to how we use cooldown, you can set a timer that way. But for our case here, we want it to be using alarm just to show off that feature. I'm going to specify alarm zero. When this alarm is done, whenever it's reached zero, I want it to actually do something. So what we're going to do here is spawn a new enemy. We're going to do an instance underscore create layer and specify we're going to create randomly within this room. Let me zoom in a little bit more for you all to read. Randomly within the Random, uh, room with that's our x value random value up to and including the room height on the same layer that we've got everything else on and we're going to create a new instance of our enemy spawn effect so now with that we create a new instance, a new object enemy spawn, randomly within the scope of the X value of the room, the Y value of the room on our current layer. Let me space it out just to make it a little bit easier to read. Then once the alarm is ended, I want to set the alarm timer to be back to our spawn rate. Now it's reset, it goes for another 60 frames, or in our case, two seconds, since we are running at 60 frames a second. Now that we have our create event that establishes our spawn rate and specifies we're going to use alarm zero, and our alarm zero event, whenever the timer is complete, to create a new spawn and reset the timer, let's go back to our room. In the room, I'm going to delete these spawn objects and drop in the spawner. Just one spawner, that's all we need. Now, whenever I hit run, the spawner is going to every 60 frames, every two seconds, create a brand new spawn. We're gonna see it grow up. Uh, let's see, there it goes, we see it grow up. And every two seconds, another one pops in. Uh, maybe the spawn rate is a little too fast. Uh, maybe we wanna increase it to every three seconds, because this is a bit too much, or maybe I want to increase the rate that I can shoot. There's a couple of other things you can mess around with. Play around with those numbers until you're satisfied with something uh, for your game. Or maybe you want to increase the damage you deal per hit. That might also balance it out. But this shows how to create an enemy spawn effect in our game. 
we have the spawn animation, which is this growing up into its size and swapping over to the enemy object. We also had the enemy spawner object that we place one down. You saw it was a question mark in the room because it doesn't have a sprite. It then will randomly generate onto our world these little sprites or these little objects that'll chase after us. And so make sure if you have any questions, you ask those in class. Otherwise, that's all I've got for this one. Have a good one.